Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I haven't done a review in a while, seeing that I'm stuck in this quarantine bound room of mine. Well, I decided um, I'm going to do a new review that I just saw last week, and that is Search Party. Yeah, it's a raunchy, precocious, and derivative comedy that I actually picked this up at Dollar Tree a month ago before you know, the coronavirus starts to hit. Um, yeah, I really miss going out to buying a lot of movies and stuff. I figure I picked this up because I never heard of this film, never saw it before. But I figured since it had one of the stars in the movie, such as T.J. Miller, um, even had Thomas Miladich, Christian Ritter, Alison Brie, and surprisingly enough, even Rosa Zalazar makes an appearance. I figured, you know, why not? Because it's also from the same creators behind Old School, Road Trip, and The Hangover. Even the cover art looks almost similar to The Hangover. <laughs> So why not? Um, but it, it's a story about two buddies who are about to search for their friend who's just ready to get married by his fiance. But when things were not working out so well, he had to go all the way to Mexico to find her because she's about to have her honeymoon of her own. But unfortunately, he stripped naked by a carjacker. So yes, this movie actually has full frontal male nudity in this movie. All the way down to his penis. And you can see his ass and everything. That's what you have in this movie. <laughs> um, it's bare bones, no features. I would have loved to hear about that, but sadly <laughs> Universal has decided to just keep it that way. Seeing that this movie didn't do quite as well when it came out. Um, I had to do some research too on the internet to hear about this. But it looks like uh, Search Party um, was originally supposed to come out in 2014. Um, under their division Focus World. This was yet another company under Focus Features that Universal owns. But suddenly the film was released internationally in France. So it didn't get a release until two years later, 2016. And it looks to me like it came out uh, in the middle of May. So I didn't know about this. Um, but hey, you know, for a dollar, I figure why not? i like to check this out to see how how funny it is. I mean, it could be a decent time waster, or maybe it could just be a bad movie, but whatever the case, I can take this, because I love raunchy comedies. So that's always the case here. You know, like I like to see something strange going around, and some, you know, belly laughs, that even if, if it's only just a few laughs here and there or so, then who knows? <laughs> I mean... It can't be worse than, than any bad movie out there, but who knows. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so the movie stars T.J. Miller from Deadpool, along with Cloverfield. But he, he's been in other comedies and other films too. Adam Pauly, who I believe he was in the, the Mini Project. And he was also in Happy Endings from ABC. Uh, Thomas Middleditch, who's from the TV series uh, Silicon Valley from HBO. Um, Shannon Woodward, who was from a show called Raising Hope and uh, Westworld from that's on HBO. Um, Allison Brie, yeah, comedian from uh, the TV series Community. And she was also in the drama series Madman. Um, Christian Ritter, who was in a TV series uh, Jessica Jones on Netflix, but she was also in 
Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 on ABC. And she was in The Defenders. Uh, but she's been in other works. Um, G.B. Smoove. Jason uh, Manazakas. Lance Reddick. Uh, Tracy Ballard. With Ricky uh, Lindholm. Kate Machushi. Which I know she's been in other stuff too. And I, I know she's a singer herself. And also done voice acting. But she went on to do shows like The Big Bang Theory, uh, Scrubs, Raising Hope, and all the rest. And Rosa Zalazar, of course, from Alita Battle Angel, along with uh, the Amazon Prime series Undone. But she also had been in films such as uh, The Maze Runner and the TV series uh, Parenthood on NBC. It's written by Mike uh, Gadman, Andrew Waller, and Scott Armstrong, of course, who is the writers of, of one of the Hangover movies. And it's directed by, once again, Scott Armstrong, and this is actually his directorial debut. The movie begins during a bachelor party. Nardo, played by Thomas Middleditch, is joining in with his best friends, Jason, no, not my brother Jason, <laughs> played by T.J. Miller, and Evan, played by Adam Pauly. He was telling his friends that he wasn't so sure if he's doing the right thing to, to get married to his uh, bridal-to-be fiance Tracy, who's played by Shannon Woodward. You know, just talking about the pros and the cons while smoking some marijuana. And apparently... That's exactly what was going to happen by the next day, right in the middle of the wedding, when Jason tries to stop Nardo from marrying Tracy, because that's where they found out what just happened. Of course, um, they actually have a, a band, I think this was Jason's band, which actually has those two mermaids, yeah, even has... Uh, like a fish tank uh, for for boobs <laughs> right there so that was the case um, so their wedding just turned out to be a disaster and Tracy just storms out all alone to go on a honeymoon vacation in Mexico which that's where both Nardo and Tracy were going to attend to so Nardo was all alone feeling totally depressed in his room, you know, already drinking, you know, where all the gifts are around. And he decided, you know, I had it with this. I'm, I'm going to go after her. So he decided to go all the way straight to Mexico so that way he can find her. But then suddenly he was being carjacked and was left completely naked. Yes, all the way down to his penis and his ass. Um, he calls Jason for help and decided to put Evan in the car, his car, while he was asleep and they head towards Mexico. Evan, of course, has a business meeting to attend to with his boss, Carl, who is played by Lance Reddick, and also has a partner who is trying to get to know a whiff. Uh, Elizabeth, played by Alison Brie, you know, she's a beautiful girl. <laughs> Which, I, I know they had to throw in some references to Die Hard, and and uh, even, <laughs> they even throw in, like, Face Off, and, yeah, because Jason was watching that, I believe, and all this other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> making, making, like, a, a brief call from <laughs> John McClane, which is just Jason just... You know, just fooling around, you know, because he's all stoned and all. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, both Jason and Evan are on their way. Uh, they stop by in California, like Calabasas, where they begin to meet this kid who goes around making all these fake IDs, you know, taking pictures, because apparently Jason lost his. But then that became... <laughs> pretty rough because now 
the kids suddenly found out because the kids' mother suddenly found out that they were there, and then that's what led to a huge fight. And then the kids' uh, older sister come by and was beating the shit out of them until they're ready to escape. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Nardo arrives at a town in Mexico and calls again. You know, he actually uh, found some pants so he can cover his nudity. He was next to a wire service company, which Evan would offer to send him money all the way through it, so they had to go straight to a local casino, which they had to meet a friend to transfer the money. Evans somehow hits a, a girl, which turns out to be Christy, played by Christian Witter, who eventually drugs him, and then he wants up in a hotel room, with this crazy guy named the Amazing Hugo, played by Jason Matazokas, who's about to take out his kidneys. Yeah, pretty fucked up, isn't it? So, um, to get help, Jason suddenly uh, bumps into a waitress named simply Pocahontas, who's played by, in a very small role, Rosa Salazar. And I have to admit, though, because at first, I didn't even realize that really was her. But now I know. <laughs> Thank God. So, Jason had to do a favor for her to actually get Evan out of the hotel room that's being trapped you know, by Hugo and Chrissy. And already, uh, Evan is completely numb. He, he can hardly move because, you know, they gave him a lot of drugs through his um, arms and his legs, so he's he's trying his best to move out of it. So now Jason, along with Pocahontas, came to the next room, so that way they can jump out of the hotel balcony to be able to save Evan from these two. And now they, they had to jump off to escape from the amazing Hugo, just before he was ready to shoot them with fire arrows from the crossbow. But Jason did thank uh, Pocahontas for that, trying to reveal her true name and identity. Now they all escape directly from the cars, um, only to find out that the car is on fire and it actually explodes just when Jason escapes and tells Evan to escape as soon as possible. So they're all alone trying to find Nardo as soon as they can but they failed to get any of the money too and then a woman which apparently his name a woman who apparently her name is simply Sarah McLaughlin yeah named after the famous singer played by Tracy Ballard well who acts which Nardo agreed to her somehow threatens her and and was ready to actually yeah because she pulls out a knife until he, she, Nardo was being chased down by a, a local cop and he ran away as soon as he can but already back to being stripped naked and then jumps all the way up and landed straight into a cocaine pickup truck where, where he's now being all covered with cocaine um, that's being pulled over by these two uh, Mexican drug dealers and it's joined in by a black uh, police uh, federal who's apparently has a golden gun and, and he's already high you know he just licks he actually ties uh, Nardo up into a chair and licks his face also punches him in the face too or same goes with these two guys and they're already getting completely high because he's already covered with uh, <laughs> cocaine so now um, Nardo was ready to escape by untying. He took out a gun and then ready to steal uh, their pickup truck and was to escape just when these guys were shooting at him. Only to note that he was driving backwards. He crashes their car and then he was ready to zoom out to find Tracy at a local hotel where she's staying now, just having her her time for herself for her honeymoon vacation 
and just when Naruto finally arrived, um, he was being the, taken in by a guard and was sent to jail. So now both Jason and Evan was ready to rescue him, even though Evan was has his meeting um, postponed. And on top of that, Elizabeth uh, just came by to get both uh, Jason and Evan before they had to steal her car. Actually gives uh, Elizabeth their laptop that was inside. So they had to drive all the way to save Nardle before Tracy arrives. You know, trying to stop these two cops. And then next thing you know, there's like a violent shootout that's about to happen. You know, between the the guards and and all these guys around. And then you even have a donkey too. So this was like, wow, one big shootout after another. And then they already uh, exploded uh, Elizabeth's car. So now they had to take Tracy's car. They had to escape as soon as possible. So that way they'll be able to finally have the wedding that they've been waiting for. So so now both Nardo and Tracy had got married. And everything was going as perfectly as possible. So there you go. Well, it's not a great comedy. I mean, it's definitely no hangover, that's for sure, when it comes to this. It's also very insane and crassy, as exactly what I expected. But it did have some belly laughs that I admit were very funny, but then there are other scenes that were completely stupid, and I could definitely see why. Um, However, it does have a nice cast. I mean, T.J. Miller, Adam Pauly, and Thomas Middleditch did exactly what they could for this particular running time. I mean, of course, I mean, even though Jason was a stoner and, and he's a completely stupid character, but at least he does everything he can to save their friends. I mean, I mean, he did a stupid thing by interrupting Nardle's uh, wedding which was going to be a success but it turns into a disaster and then he has to spend his entire film completely stripped naked and get into bigger trouble you know being attacked by a woman these cops drug dealers everything I mean this was like a nightmare um, even though Jason and Evan also got into bigger trouble themselves too while trying to help out their friend um, but either way, I mean, that's certainly the case of this particular story. <laughs> um, but it's nice to see all the actors, um, besides T.J. Miller, Alan Pauly, and Thomas Middleditch. I mean, you got Alison Brie, and she was cute. I mean, I definitely can see why, you know, Evan was very nervous. But once, you know, she tries to get to know her better, I think things will go completely smooth. Um, but she is very quirky. Um, Tracy was cute. Kind of felt bad for her because of what happened. And then everything just... Then you have some supporting cast too, like Christian Ritter as Chrissy. Uh, Jason Malazaka as the amazing Hugo. You know, this guy who's so crazy that he's just going to go around taking everyone's kidneys out. I mean... You don't want to mess with this guy. And there's other um, stars, as you may think. Like, for example, you got uh, the winning singer duel with Wiki Lindhorn and Kate Mochuchi, where they basically just sing some, like a wedding song that has a lot of vulgarity in there. I mean, yeah, like those dick and, and peanut, like these uh, dick and vagina jokes in there. And, Oh, is that a crazy shit? Um, and um, I'll say this though: I would say the best moment had to be uh, Rosa Salazar as Pocahontas, where he's about she joins in with Jason to help uh, Evan, and she jumps out to the next uh, hotel balcony, exactly as smooth as she could do. I mean. I, I could definitely tell she can do her own stunts right there. I don't think that wasn't a stunt double. 
I can already tell that this was a leader right there even before the movie even exists. <laughs> In fact, I, I know this one moment I was ready to say, you know, Alita. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, just by the time uh, they're about to escape from the amazing Hugo and Chrissy, I mean, yeah, both her and, and Jason just jumps out of the hotel balcony with Evan into the swimming pool so they can escape as soon as possible while being attacked by Hugo with the crossbow. Yeah, filled with uh, fire arrows. Very funny, but also uh, a very nice moment to, to see her, but of course she's only there for just a few minutes of screen time. I mean, I, I was expecting maybe she might show up at the end of the movie, but that wasn't the case. Yeah. So, I can see why. Um, now, originally, because I'm doing some research in here, was that it was actually originally called Road to Nardo. Sony was going to pick this up, but I guess they went into turnarounds, so they had to give it to uh, Universal to release it themselves. But seeing that they they didn't get a chance to release it in 2014, they had to release it two years later before it finally went straight to Blu-ray <laughs> later on. Yeah. Well, it got negative reviews from critics, and it got 11 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. I, I understand. It's it's not the best movie ever made, but I guess I could take it for some of its funny moments and for the cast alone. I mean, even for some references of other movies or so. I, I, I could see that. I give the film credit for actually exposing some nudity, mostly the male nudity, but they also did have a little bit of female nudity from this uh, neck brace uh, waitress that Jason suddenly spots at a local hotel and wants up uh, in the swimming pool you know, with just relaxing with her all fully nude. And then there's the violent shootout scene where they're about to rescue Nardo. Uh, yes, there's a lot of those references here. And then the, the black police officer came by joining in with the two gang and he actually dressed up wearing a American flag around him and brings out a machine rifle to shoot him down and then next thing you know their their donkey was already high on cocaine. Not to mention um, Jason actually brought in a bazooka, first shoots some like bean bags and stuff and then next thing you know they actually did shot uh, a bomb. Like it could be a, a a rocket or a grenade, um, which basically explodes, you know, when he accidentally shot the car. As it is, though, it's not really good. I mean, it's kind of stupid, kind of ridiculous at times, but otherwise, it's a decent time waster. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So anyway, that's Search Party, and I give the movie, just for the sake of it, two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.